Right, hello lads, uh, today we have a chat about our accommodation. Obviously half of us were in uh, Stoke Bishop, half of us in City Centre. Uh, do you want to start off by sort of introducing yourselves? I'll, I'll go first. Uh, I'm, I'm Ben, I was one of the VC and I was in Wills Hall in Stoke Bishop this year. Right, I'll go second. Uh, I'm Matt Francis. Uh, I'm in, well, I'm in charge of the social media and marketing department of the Bristol Committee. Uh, so I was from Unite House in Centre. Um, I'm Billy. I'm a recruitment officer and I was in Durdham in Stoke Bishop. Hi guys, um, I'm Henry, um, club captain. And uh, I was from uh, City Centre, specifically Riverside. Right, nice. So we got out of the way. We'll start off with um, sort of how you found your accommodation uh, in terms of getting getting around to uni before we move on to the rugby aspects. How did you find it in terms of getting to your lectures, going to and from? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, so I basically, all my lectures were always very near Priory Road and by the physics uh, lecture halls. So every single morning or, well, or afternoon, it was a 15 minute walk. So that's obviously a lot shorter than the traveling that you needed to do from Stoke Bishop. I'm pretty sure, so I could obviously wake up a lot later. Uh, but I think the main thing, it's quite hard to get up in the morning and instantly go for a 15 minute walk. So that's just like a little downside of being in centre. Bredson, what did you think? Because you, you weren't obviously in the same, exactly the same area as Matt, you were down by Riverside. Yeah, so Riverside's towards, um, all towards <clears throat> Bristol Harbour, around there, a little bit further away from the uni. Um, sort of the other side of the city centre to where Matt was. Um, yeah, I mean, getting to uni was all right, to be honest. Didn't have to rely on, on buses or anything. Just took me 20 minutes, hop out and, um, you know, you find shortcuts as you go throughout the year. Um, so, yeah, getting to uni wasn't too bad, um, if you don't mind walking up hills, I guess. Fair enough. Um, just want to say, obviously, there is accommodation in Clifton, but none of the committee members were actually in the Clifton accommodation but is sort of very similar in to city centre in the way that it is very close to sort of the triangle and the campus but a little bit further away from training when we get onto that. Uh, but if you want to go ahead about your sort of experience in Stoke Bishop, how you found in sort of getting to your lectures, going to the city? Yeah in terms of lectures it's simple just one bus straight in and out um, every 10-15 minutes would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're a lot. They're a lot more frequent, sort of between nine and eleven, because that's when those people got gets there. Yeah. Was it eight and eleven? Sorry, you go down nine a.m. sort of ten a.m. You got a lot more then, but yeah, it seems to be sort of every sort of twelve minutes after that. Yeah, the only it's problem, cool. the only problem I ever had was the getting into my nine a.m.s, which a couple of times you just have to wait an extra ten minutes for the next bus, but it's never really an issue, and the bus stops two minutes from any of the uh, lecture halls, so. Why yeah. do you need to wait 10 minutes? It's because often you, you could get, if you were going for a 9 a.m., that's probably when the buses are the busiest. So you might actually have to miss one because it's full. Like you, There's too many people there. But oh, okay. yeah, it's very rare that you miss two because of that. But it wouldn't be so uncommon that you'd miss one. Although a lot of people, to get around that, um, they just end up walking in the end. It didn't take too long. It's not quite as close as you guys, but it's sort of a half an hour walk, depending on which bit the uni you're going to. But having done that in sort of the second term, it's quite a nice walk. It's pretty easy, just down White Ladies Road, across the Downs. So it's pretty simple. Is anyone here catered? Yeah, I was catered. Were you all self catered? Yeah. yeah. How did you find self catered? I mean, self catered, but I mean, I don't know. So you can't compare between people that were catered. Um, I don't know their experience. I'll be interested to see what you've got to say, Stringer. but. I thought self catered just worked quite nicely. Um, you have a little bit more freedom, obviously, when it comes to meal times and stuff. So when you're getting up early for training or coming back from training late or whatever, then you know you can sort of cook and eat when you want. But getting getting the food is certainly something that can be a bit of a nuisance at points. Yeah, it does take a bit of effort to like get yourself up and out, get a bit of food, and then especially cooking. I always found whenever I was lying in my bed. Mm. Couldn't be bothered to get up and actually make a meal, but 
your wash up as well. Uh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Although I do think self cater definitely brings an advantage for the. Uh, well, I don't know about cater, but I know a lot of people have had issues with cooking at weekends and stuff like that. And you've just got all the facilities there to cook whatever you want whenever you need it. Yeah, to be fair, that's one thing. So I was, I was, I was in catered, so my, my whole hall was catered, which I think I probably would still prefer if I could do it again. I'd still go cater, I think, just because it's sort of one less thing to worry about. Whenever I sort of went and saw mates in other halls who were self catered, often their kitchens are quite quite messy because you've got quite a few people in a, one kitchen all trying to cook similar times and obviously with different sort of schedules in terms of what sport are doing, their courses, or people coming in and out quite a bit. Um, yeah, so we I got breakfast and dinner from Monday to Friday, and then and breakfast and lunch on the weekends. So obviously we did have to get sort of lunch every day in the week, but that's pretty easy because half the time you're in, you're in university anyway, so you can go get a meal deal or something. Um, then on the weekends you have to sort out your own own dinner. And like you say, we don't have the same, we didn't quite have the same cooking sort of resources. We had sort of kettle, uh, microwave. And that's a uh, toaster. <laughs> that's more or less it. Got a pot um, noodle in it. Well, I, I was very, you, you're right because you can you can do that's too fair. Mostly mostly use the microwave. A lot of baked beans, but loads of students are find that no matter whether your case or not. Um, but yeah, I I like to just one less thing to worry about in terms of cooking for yourself, taking the time out of your day, cleaning up, and all that stuff. And it's got quite, quite a social experience in terms of going to eat each meal with your whole group of mates, just going and everyone's there anyway. So I quite enjoyed that. Um, so I just want to move on to how you found your halls in terms of how easy or difficult it made for you to be part of the club, or what you'd suggest for first years coming in as to where you think they ought to go in the end. Um, yeah, well, from Matthew uh, and myself, it was a bit more of a challenge to get to training. I remember actually the day of the trial, um, I nearly just didn't go. Just because, um, like, the buses around Bristol were certainly something that you've got to uh, get a little bit used to. Um, so, I mean, we had to get a, a three uh, if we wanted to go to Coombe Dingle. Um, and that's about a half an hour bus ride early in the morning when there's no traffic. And obviously it gets longer when there's traffic. Um, yeah, I mean, you sort of get used to it. It becomes part of the routine, but it definitely is a bit more of a challenge coming from the city centre. Then if you go for um, somewhere in like Stoke Bishop, because obviously Stoke Bishop is like a 10 minute walk. I mean, I got quite lucky towards sort of after Christmas. So I ended up just getting lifts from uh, Cal all the time. But before that, it was a, it was a bit bit long. Well, did you find the same thing with your training? Welshie? Oh, Welshie, sorry. I thought you said with Billy. Um, yeah, in all fairness, the buses, you do need to get used to them because they're either way too early or they're about 10 minutes late. So that can mess up your time. And if you're kind of just on the boundary of when training's starting. So it's definitely a big factor. But it's just the main difference is, say, when you actually go into the socials. So obviously socials at alter egos which is up more or less at the very top of white ladies road and that's also say a 10 minute bus ride but i'd say the bus is is that easy to get to from stoke bishop it's probably the same if it's a 10 minute bus ride for you i mean bus ride probably 10 minutes or less for us but sort of similar everyone sort of just by when everyone's got to leave get social on time everyone sort of just convenes down at the transport hub in the state bishop sort of accommodation village and everyone just gets on the same bus basically turns up social at the same time so i think it's probably pretty similar i reckon at least in terms of getting to and getting to socials from city center all yeah well state bishop. in that sense then I, I reckon stoke bishop kind of win that one in the training side of rugby mm. yeah. yeah one thing i did find challenging as well was um if we were going to watch the boys you know, in a Wednesday night lights game, coming back from an away fixture. Obviously, you get dropped off at the SU, and if you've been on the coach coming back from Exeter for a two o'clock kickoff, then you're not getting back till six, half six, seven. 
Um, and most of our journeys are around that sort of two, two to three hour mark. Um, and yeah, you can't really, if you're going to go watch the boys down at Dingle, you can't go back to the city centre and drop your kit off. So, so I had to end up just leaving bags at some of the older boys' house, houses or um, that sort of thing. That was a bit annoying. Whereas sort of, if you're um, going from the SU towards Dingle, then, you, you know, if you live in Soap Bishop, you can sort of drop stuff off on the, on the way. Yeah, Bill, do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, it was very convenient. Obviously, Dingle's so close, um, especially for the early morning sessions, just rolling out of bed half an hour before getting 10 minute walk. Um, we actually managed to time it so the bus came past. Yeah, us. even then, it was a 15 minute walk. We even managed to cop out of that because the three, like you say, the three goes down uh, to Dingle and there's a three that went sort of 15 to 20 minutes before training and basically stopped right outside. So it was like, ideal for us at that early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Was, yeah. And like you say, in terms of getting down to Wednesday night lights, if you were dropped at the SU, you're going the same direction. You're going to drop your stuff off at your halls and either you walk down or you manage to get that bus for like two minutes, that free bus. So I think, I definitely think in terms of if you want to really push for your rugby, especially if you're training quite often, if you manage to get from performance squads, I think it really is beneficial to be part, to be in State Bishop. It's just because in terms of getting to your lectures, like realistically you can do it. There's so many buses, they're all free. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to be organised enough? But then in terms of rugby, it's so much easier being in Stoke Bishop. 100%. I mean, I only, in my actual building, there's probably three lads that play rugby. And then across the, the to the other two buildings, there's one and another, so two. So five of us out of three buildings with uh, loads of students only play rugby. So you can understand, like... I don't know, the mo most of the people go up and so Bishop, don't they? Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to ask about that. What did you find just rugby, lectures aside, the sort of atmospheres of your guys, um, your accommodation? Because at least I felt in State Bishop, where well, sort of 3,000 students in State Bishop, got essentially a village of loads of different halls that was like quite easy to go to each other's accommodations, see mates, um, it's always busy. Like all those early mornings, quite a few of us would convene on our way down. It's probably quite easy. And even on like socials or, for example, like Monday nights, freshers nights, they would be quite funny, quite lively on the bus, like both in and on the way back out in the morning after. I quite enjoyed that in terms of, sort of having to get that bus to everyone else. I thought it was quite fun. Yeah, what do you think, Matt? All right. Uh, so. Obviously, I was in United House and got to say, it wasn't the most social accommodation I've been to. If I was definitely to have a, if I was to stay in centre, I reckon I would decide to go to Riverside this time. Because it's just, I mean, majority, I'm living with, so Bedson's in my house next year and four of the boys that are in the house next year are all from Riverside. So that if I was there, it would have probably speeded up the process of meeting those great boys. Um, so I would have probably preferred that, but Unite definitely just, there was just something about it, which wasn't really kind of like a community. It was more that everybody stuck to their own flats. I always tried to be as social as possible. So always sticking it in the accommodation group chat saying flat party here, come here, but it just, never really formed into a full group really yeah i'd say in the city center like just the way the buildings are they're all sort of these like high rise buildings or like flats of you know on top of each other and yeah, i mean just the way they're built they're sort of made to be a, a little bit less social where um i mean from being up with a few mates at their various different halls whether it's like higher baker or um Churchill or whatever I mean you, there is definitely that sort of as String spoke about that sort of village or like campus feel about it um, which is definitely more I'd say the conditions are made easier to sort of socialize and stuff but I don't think that's to knock off like some some parts of the city center like for me personally I'm, I made a lot of friends in my halls um, and I just sort of lucked out with a, a good flat essentially I think that's half of it 
is you know who your flatmates are and stuff um so yeah and i found to be fair like you get a very different experience of bristol i think um depending on where you, you're living so you know in the city center you're spending a lot more time sort of down there obviously and around the harbor and there's a few nice places around there um whereas i didn't spend that much time up on the downs or in places like that and you know i don't know i guess you guys would would say the same you had a different experience to, to us yeah yeah just to add on the community feel of stoke bishop as well um my hall had quite a reputation for being one of the quieter ones but yeah just the fact that you got three thousand students up there all so close to each other i was constantly across the bay dark hyatt baker all around just meeting other people and same vice versa they would come to us and you're just free to go and see anyone you want really it's a lot easier yeah i think both of you between sort of hitting on the head i think you're quite fortunate in state bishop that you are essentially a village of thousands of other students a lot of people like you so even if you might find it a bit more difficult in your halls and you can't move or your flat you do have a lot of other options not that you don't have that necessarily in city centre, but you probably have it more so, I'd say, in State Bishop. But like you say, Bedson, it also can be down to, you know, if you've got a class flat with a lot of people you like, then it doesn't, doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, I would exactly. say, I reckon, if you're looking for catered, I reckon you'd look at sort of Churchill, maybe Wills, if you're going to State Bishop. But I reckon if you're going self-catered, I'd definitely say Hype Baker. Hype Baker self-catered, some like the nicest, definitely some of the nicest combination I saw. Yeah, and I mean, it's probably important to mention as well, there are people that, you know, do move. So, you know, if you're put in halls that aren't your first or second choice and you think, you know, that's the be all and end all, it's not the case. Like, I know a, lo a load of people, a few friends of mine that, you know, move from city centre. Uh, to... one, one of my housemates for next year moved. Um, he was in Churchill first. He was very persistent. He ended up moving in, in sort of January time, I think, to beginning of second term. Uh, yeah, he managed to move from Churchill into Wales where the rest of us were. Um, yeah, and like you say, it's not like the be all and end or even even come in second term, people are moving because yeah. you never know what's happening. Yeah, and I think, you know, what is really good, especially about the club, is just obviously you're meeting loads of people from all around. Like, there's no way that I would, I would just because of the location of where I was living, there's no way I'd meet most of the boys that I'm now mates with I wouldn't have met you like if it wasn't part of the club. Wouldn't no. have met nearly everyone else. So even though you you know you're dotted across different halls, um, you know like the rugby club is obviously a great great chance and opportunity to sort of make more friendships. And it's proven by the amount of boys that go and live with each other. Yeah. I was going to say quite a few rugby houses made second and third year. I think another important thing about accommodation is just getting home from nights out and stuff. I don't know what experiences you boys had um i reckon in terms of state bishop because obviously you're busting in and out i still found it pretty easy um obviously your nights out more or less are mostly on triangle like sports night is main freshest nights are on the triangle uh, and at the bus stop you get on and off that is oh, what's what 20 meters away from the club so it's pretty easy again they go they go pretty regularly probably quite every half an hour until, what was it, 4.30? I think it's like the last one. So it was pretty easy. I always found it quite easy. And, you know, it was quite funny, those buses as well. So I quite enjoyed it. I still thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I never yeah, really had I've any troubles with it. Been on a few, it's quite a good social, isn't it? And I think as well, even if, you know, you're not getting a bus, like the amount of people that, you, you know, you're going out with on nights out, you know, you can always find a, two or three people that you can, you know, split an Uber with or whatever on the way home. Um, in terms of city centre, just the location of it, you know, it's just down Park Street where our halls were. So just a quick five, ten minute walk on the way home um, and you're, you're back in your halls. So, yeah, it's probably a little bit easier to get home when you're in the city centre just because most of the clubs are in and around there, unsurprisingly. Um, but again, I think it's one of those things that probably people might put a bit too much attention on than, than is really necessary. Yeah, it's not really, it's not that big of a deal, especially. Yeah, when... yeah either option's easy in terms of like getting on nights out, either option's fine. Yeah. The, what, 15 minute walk or it's a 15 minute bus. It's pretty simple. 
Right, is that everything covered then, lads? Yeah, I think we should wrap it up now. Good. Hope that any first years might find that helpful before applying to accommodation. Um, I hope it answers any questions you may have had or you haven't been able to ask until now. So yeah. cheers, lads. Thank you for being part of school. Check out our website, www.ubrc.com. And our Instagram and our Facebook and our Twitter, all our social media. Interesting. Yeah. Comment customers. and subscribe. Go on that um, message board or whatever it is, data capture. And uh, get in contact. Okay, nice. Sorry.